coming out. We appreciate it. Feel free, obviously there's a lot of space up front, for, so feel free to move on up if you'd like. No pressure though. Uh, so everyone, welcome tonight and welcome to everyone viewing tonight on TV. Uh, thank you for Manchester Public Television for coming out and recording this for us. Uh, so my name is Jody Nazaka. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Manchester. I will do a little bit, a quick round of introductions before I give a little quick uh, intro to what we're doing here tonight. So I'll pass it over here to Roberto. Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Munoz. I am the Director of Research at North Star Place Sparing and Marketing. And we have received a very warm, warm welcome here in your city and we really we're excited to be here, um, and we thank everybody who we've had the pleasure of interacting with over the past couple of days. Um, I am here with a team of four, and my colleague Sam Preston will be presenting with me tonight. Right. Yeah, so I'm Sam Preston, uh, Director of Project Management at North Star, uh, and I've had a great time. Uh, we got here Monday, and uh, we're here all the way through the end of the day today. We leave tomorrow. Um, but, uh, but it's been great to be here in Manchester for the last few days, and I uh, really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's in, for uh, Roberto, it's got such a great name, it just rolls off your tongue. Though. Roberto, Roberto. Uh, but it is really nice to have this team here. Uh, this is a, gr a great night to kind of get everyone out here to kind of give you an overview of the program and, and the initiative and what, uh, what it is and how it came about, uh, which, you know, we'll get into that as well. Jody will cover this in a second, but uh, we really do want to... Who are you? Oh, well, well, that's right. I'm just, uh, as Andy would say, it's, uh, it's Eric. Uh, my, uh, so I'm Eric, Eric Lesniak. I'm with the Economic Development Office. I work for Jody. She's the uh, director over here uh, at the City of Manchester. I didn't good? mean to cut you off there, but no, I want to no, make sure good. everyone you're knows who, who you are because you're oh, yeah. a great asset to the city. Um, so continue with your... Yeah, so uh, again, we, we're, this, is, this is a very important initiative for, for our city. It's citywide. It's not just in one location. We have various points throughout the 34.9 square miles here. So it's a, it's a very important initiative here that covers the whole city, and we really appreciate for all of you coming out uh, because you're, what you're about to hear tonight is going to be really interesting as where we're heading with this, um, this initiative and branding for the city moving forward. Yeah, thank you. And so a little bit of background about how this process started and where we are today and where we will continue to take this initiative into the future. So I want to thank the mayor and the aldermen for voting to put this money aside. This project is funded through the American Rescue Plan. So uh, the American Rescue Plan is COVID recovery funding. The city received about $43 million of that um, as a COVID response. So $2 million was set aside to support the recovery efforts of travel tourism, the Manchester Boston Regional Airport and our business community. So this isn't just $2 million that is going towards a brand or a logo. This is a much bigger initiative for the city that we're focusing on to make sure that we are attracting the right things that will increase our tax base and increase the attractiveness to the people that live here, people that work here, and potentially visitors that are looking to relocate, move, grow a family, and open a business in our city. Um, so through this opportunity, we started a process late last year, um, I think probably in November. We did an RFP process. We submitted that out. I think we had it out to the public for about 30-ish days. We received a tremendous response from organizations all across the country, many that were local here, but many from across the country. Um, and we did a painstakingly very thorough interview pro or review process and then an in-person interview process. And we are excited to uh, introduce you to North Star Place Branding out of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we did consider very local opportunities and what attracted us to the opportunity that we had with North Star Place Branding is that they have an outsider's perspective. What tends to happen here is, in, in any community, is that you put blinders on and you forget often about what is good about our city. There are negatives and there are issues and there are concerns in any city, but we are very fortunate to have a lot of great assets in our city and bringing in an outside perspective often reminds us of that and i have to say it reminded me of that as we were giving them a tour of the city on monday and it's very refreshing to hear what their perspectives are to see what the things that we maybe don't see uh, so we're very excited to work with them so we signed a contract with north star place branding in march of this year and we immediately got started working with them so this is their first visit to the city. As, as Sam said, they've been here since Monday. We've done a very extensive tour of the entire city, starting with the downtown Milliard, going as far north as 
the Hackett Hill area, going as far south as the very tip of the city, over areas to the west side by Massabe or the east side by Massabesic, and all the way over to the west side near Goffstown. So we've showed them everything, and then what we didn't show them, they've taken it upon themselves to do their own personal tour of the city. Um, so they have a very good perspective, and they've seen a lot of things that we forgot to show them. Um, so we're very excited for you guys to see a little presentation from them tonight, to see some of the work they've done. They will tell you a little bit more about themselves in their presentation, but I think what is important for everyone to know is that this group here specializes in municipal place branding. They do not work with private groups. They do not work with energy drinks or breweries. They only work with municipalities. So they specialize in this type of initiative. They specialize with working with the community like you. They specialize with working around the politics. And what their focus is on is much different than if we were working with an organization that did private branding. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Again, they'll go into more detail about that. And before we turn it over to them, I just didn't know if Eric wanted to add anything else about the process. Yeah, so uh, you know, just, just at the end of it, once the presentation is over, we'll have a question and answer session, the opportunity to kind of have some dialogue, and the two of us on the side of the room will be able to pass the mic over to you as well, um, and just kind of uh, enjoy the presentation. Turn it over All to right. you guys. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, so like Eric and Jody said, um, we've got a, a brief presentation, maybe 10, 15, well, 15 minutes or so. Uh, just to kind of show a little bit of some examples of what, uh, what's been done in the past for some other communities, why it's so important, why now, why Manchester, uh, but then also at the very end, uh, as this is a community brand, we want to hear from the community. So on Monday we did uh, the tour where we saw as much as we possibly could, but then all day yesterday and all day today we've only been doing focus groups and one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, with key segments of the city, uh, just trying to figure out what is unique or authentic or distinct to Manchester, uh, so that, that can be, uh, you know, resembled in, in the new brand. So, um, but really, again, appreciate you guys coming out tonight so that we can hear from you at the end of this presentation and telling us why Manchester is so great. Um, but uh, I think we have a pretty good sense of that already. All right, so why branding? And why now? Uh, it's a very important moment in time for the city of Manchester. Uh, but as we go through this branding process, and some of the things that we're able to do, we want to define and own your distinct story. There is a narrative already out there about Manchester. There's a story being told, uh, but we want to control it. We want to be able to tell our own story the right way rather than letting somebody else uh, come up with any other notions or impressions or perceptions. We'd much rather tell the story that we want and tell it accurately. Uh, it's, a, it's a chance to reflect the city's plan by embracing that history and setting up for the future. Uh, the brand that, uh, that ultimately comes out of this project is not something that we're creating. It's not something that we're changing. We're not coming in here with wrecking balls and saying, this is what you guys need to be. This is what we're proposing. But we're here to really uncover the brand that already exists and figure out how to tell that story the best way possible. We want to figure out what is so good about Manchester, and then let's tell that. Uh, also, professionalizing the municipal government uh, and providing that universal message. Uh, it speaks volumes and there's a lot of equity from outsiders, from tourists, from uh, potential residents, from potential businesses, when the city and all of its departments and the chamber and economic development and everybody else is kind of speaking from the same, uh, or singing from the same hymnal, speaking with the same messaging. Uh, there's, when there's that cohesion, people from the outside can just look and say, these guys know what they're doing, they have their stuff put together, uh, Manchester's got something going on really well. And then also it's a, it's a way to positively influence the residents, both new residents, old residents, businesses, investors, and visitors. Uh, just something to get excited about, something to, uh, to all embrace. So it's a tool for reaching your preferred future. As I mentioned, uh, we want to figure out what's distinct, what's authentic, what's ownable. What can't be replicated elsewhere? What is so different about Manchester from the rest of the community or from, from a county or two counties over? Um, what is truly ownable and distinct to, to this area? And the new brand should be authentic, but also a little bit aspirational. It's not just who you are now, but it's also looking forward. What do we want to be? Uh, where are we headed and how do we show that accurately? So as Jody mentioned, uh, we have been working all across the United States. We have the experience um, to, to really help, uh, help Manchester thrive and, and do this correctly. Uh, we're based out of Jacksonville, um, and uh, we've done this in 250 cities throughout 46 different states. 
Uh, and so it is kind of nice to come in here with that experience to look at maybe some similarities with Manchester and other communities, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, so that we almost have a, a little bit of a playbook as to here's a little cheat sheet for you guys. Here's what you can really do. Here's how to make it work a little bit better rather than just being so short-sighted and, and, and not have that full perspective. Um, so your brand is what people say about you when you're not around. And what are people saying about Manchester? When you're not in the room, uh, you know, you're having a dinner party and you leave the room and, you know, the gossip or the small talk starts to happen. What's being said about you? What's being said about Manchester? Branding is what you do about it. But, as you guys I'm sure know, branding has a branding problem. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a negative connotation when you hear the word branding or rebrand. You know, you think people are coming in and completely changing things and that's not the case. Um, we do want to, again, uh, cultivate what is already here and what is authentic. But a great brand means that you never have to justify your prices, right? I mean, you could get a 75 cent cup or the exact same thing at Starbucks, have no problem charging 325, and I think the slide's a little bit old. I think that should be what, 525 or 625? A great brand means you never even have to write your name. And just think about the experiences or think about the memories or, uh, you know, it, it, the brand is so much more than just a logo. And we'll get into that here in a little bit too. But a great brand means you don't even have to explain yourself. And a great brand signals who's the best. And it gives you a public face. We've got Jake from State Farm. I mean, you could even, you could hide every single logo in there and you still know exactly who that is, what that represents. And it gives you a, a competitive edge. So when you think again about that strong brand of what's gonna be done for Manchester and when you have the city and economic development and chamber and airport and parks and rec and all the other different departments, all having a unified message, unified visuals, there's just a lot of strength in that. And, and as we try to bring some, some additional investment into the downtown area, or as we try to bring some more uh, jobs or uh, affordable housing or whatever it is, as these developers look at, uh, at the potential of building or doing something in Manchester, when you can see that everything is, is uh, cohesive, again, it just has a, has a lot of strength. Let's see. And a brand, a strong brand, has a legacy that endures. So when you look at this logo, what, uh, what comes to mind? Is it the theme parks? Is it the memories? Is it the movies? Is it, uh, you know, there's so much more to it than just this logo. With a swooshy D and a swooshy Y and that circle on the I, um, you know, our hope is that when this whole brand is done for Manchester, that we'll have, that we'll be able to quickly evoke some similar emotions or you're able to recall some memories or experiences that you've had in Manchester. And so let's talk about, a brand is more than a logo. So let's just think about, we're not seeing any visuals here, but would you rather take a beach vacation in Maui or the Florida Gulf Coast? Both good places, but both very different. And so there, there is a brand in each of those, right? And would you rather sample wine in Sonoma or the Finger Lakes? And then uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the four Ps of, uh, of marketing between product, place, price, and promotion. Uh, in municipality branding, it's a little bit different. The four Ps are passion, 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 passion. And that's exactly why you guys are all here tonight. Uh, you're very passionate about where you live. You're protective of where you live. Uh, don't, I mean, some people might not want change of any kind. We're not here to change the city. We're here, to, again, to make sure that people know accurately what is here. And uh, coming back again, communities generally become more competitive and see improvement in their overall reputation when all the main sectors of a community are aligned to a common strategy or to a common DNA. And so I want to, um, we'll just share it briefly here. There's a, a little bit more research done in place making branding uh, in Europe than there is here in the United States. And so just four uh, quick points to call out. But uh, you do see uh, some increased competitiveness resulting in positive impact on jobs, investment, residents, visitors, and events uh, when you go through um, or when the communities work uh, a little bit more collaboratively. There's also higher returns on investment in real estate, infrastructure, and events, 
and a coherent city development as the physical, social, and uh, economic and cultural aspects combine to deliver the brand promise or DNA. And then the last thing, pride in the city. Um, we want Manchester residents to truly be prideful and proud uh, to, to live here in Manchester. And, uh, you know, we've heard it from a lot of people already that while we are proud to live in Manchester, we may not be boastful about it, and that's okay. Um, but our, our greatest brand ambassadors or greatest city ambassadors are the residents. And so we do want to invoke a lot of pride in, uh, in and through the community. So as, uh, as we talk a little bit about um, why we're here, uh, we do have a, a very solid approach to, uh, to this process. It looks a little bit like an hourglass, just to kind of fill you guys in on the process. We're at the very top of that, um, top of that hourglass, starting with that stakeholder and community education. We're doing a whole lot of those focus groups and one-on-one -on -one interviews doing a, um, open forum meetings like this to, to kind of bring everybody up to speed as to what we're trying to do. And then we do a whole lot of research. We do research inside the community, outside the community. Uh, we'll do surveys uh, within the next few weeks. There'll be a community survey that we want everybody to, uh, to participate in. And uh, those that aren't here tonight or those who haven't been a part of a focus group or one-on-one -on -one interview, we still want them to give their input. Uh, so that survey will be available for everybody. We'll also survey people outside the community. We'll have phone conversations with, uh, with neighboring communities, uh, city leaders, economic development leaders, uh, chambers, um, residents in neighboring communities, again, to figure out what is that outsider's perspective? How do we change that outsider's narrative uh, to best tell Manchester's story? Oh, sorry. And then all of that leads down to the DNA and strategy formation. We'll put together a long run-on sentence that says, this is who and what Manchester is, this is why it matters, this is what you get out of it. And I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, and then after that, after we get consensus from, uh, from key city leaders, that's when we start working through brand and messaging development. Uh, so a logo and a tagline and, and some brand and, uh, and colors and that type of thing. But then the big thing here is some brand action ideas. We'll give, uh, give Jody and the team a whole slew of brand action ideas in this 300 page final report of how to bring the brand to life, how to infuse this new brand into the community, whether it's initiatives or, or events or whatever it is, but just trying to bring this brand uh, to life and making it authentic. So I just wanna share one, one example of some place branding and marketing um, where we move from that DNA after all the research, uh, showing you the DNA statement uh, and into that brand story. So I want to share real quick what, uh, what was recently done for a community that we worked with uh, called Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. They are right outside Madison. Uh, they share a border with Madison on the, on the northeast. And uh, they've always kind of been overshadowed by Madison a little bit. And this is, uh, they've really wanted to try to stand on their own, make a place of their own, and, and just, uh, you know, kind of come out and say, we can do this ourselves. We don't need to rely on the scraps that uh, the Madison is giving us. So the, the DNA, state more, well, DNA statement that we came up with, it's a long run-on sentence. You would never see this in any marketing language, but it's just kind of the mindset into, as to how to operate. Uh, we said, for families wanting some room to grow in the upper Midwest, Sun Prairie rising to the northeast of Madison, celebrates all things endearing and fun from Jimmy and Georgia to midget cars and corn, and welcomes everyone to come as you are to enhance our collective future. They're, uh, they're a small place that claims to be the birthplace of, uh, of Grand Hogs Day, as uh, several communities do. So that's who Jimmy is. Uh, Georgia is Georgia O'Keeffe, the birthplace of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, but uh, the real thing that we uncovered there was they're just a little quirky, a little odd, a little weird, and they like it. They embrace that. That's who we are, and we want people to know that. And so you'll see some of the things that, uh, that come out of the brand uh, that really reflect that. And they're also... Uh, huge pushes in, in, uh, in diversity and, and equity and inclusivity. Uh, they're not a very diverse community, but they are an extremely welcoming community and they want everybody to feel welcome uh, into, into Sun Prairie. So this is the, the brand or the logo that we came up with for them. Uh, you would typically think of Sun Prairie, you break that down and you have a sun high overhead and a prairie underneath. But again, coming back to that quirkiness and, and how odd they are, we tilted it, we moved it 90 degrees to the left so that it is, uh, but also shows a little bit of motion and movement so the sun is rising over that prairie and it has that, that motion in it. Um, but really the tagline here that we have revolves around you. Kind of a, a little bit of a science, science play or a science pun. Uh, normally we all revolve around the sun, 
but in Sun Prairie, everything revolves around you as the individual, or revolves around you as an event, or revol revolves around you as a business. Uh, and they make that very clear that you are really the center of the universe. And you can see, uh, going back to everybody collectively playing well together in the same sandbox, you can see how uh, that same brand works for downtown, and works for Visit Sun Prairie, works for different departments like the economic development. So they're all a little bit different, but they all play very well together. And so as people from the outside do a Google search and see all these things, they know that, okay, Sun Prairie's got itself working very well together. Uh, this is a, an ad that we came up with for them, again showing that uh, this is a great example of how everything revolves around you. So whether it's an event, whether it's uh, uh, an individual or a parade or, or whatever it is, uh, you can see that little triangle right below the, the cornhead girl. Uh, you can put that on any single image and that is what Sun Prairie revolves, excuse me, what Sun Prairie revolves around. Uh, put together some, uh, some signage examples of what could be done throughout the city. Um, again, just to, to bring that brand to life. And so this is something that we'll put together for, for Manchester as well. We'll have a whole host of examples of how to bring this brand to life um, and, and how you can um, put, place that throughout the city and, and reinforce uh, whatever messaging it is that, that, uh, that comes up. You can see with some economic development and site selector packets, uh, how everything really just kind of comes together. And in this instance, as we're talking to potential businesses coming into town, so uh, we want to really reinforce that message that we can revolve around you. You bring your business here, we do whatever you need, we do whatever it takes to make sure that you thrive, we thrive, um, but together we're all, we're all in it together. You can see how cool something like a, some city vehicles might look. Uh, again, something that could be done for, uh, for Manchester. Uh, some letterhead, some, appara uh, some yeah, stationery and letterhead, it's super simple things, but again, just reinforcing that brand um, and, and just that, that repetition time and time again. Uh, some pole banners, some street banners you can do downtown. Again, uh, they have a, it's, it's a crazy event. They've got Corn Fest in the fall, where they have, uh, they string some, uh, they string uh, pieces of string between trees at their downtown square, and they just have truckloads of corn that come in. They don't bake it, they don't boil it, it's just, you shuck it and you eat it raw, but then they have, uh, hanging from each of those, uh, those twines or those strings is just some salt and pepper shakers. And so everybody's just walking around peppering and salting their own corn, and it's just this massive three-ton Corn fest for the day. Uh, so I mean, we talk about a little quirky and odd. They're it, and and they embrace it. And this is their downtown square. Um, but you can see how we've we've mocked up uh, what could be done with that brand, taking some of those sun uh, beams or those elements uh, of the prairie and those colors, infusing them into the crosswalks so that it is through integrated truly throughout the community. And then even what can be done at playgrounds. Uh, again, from a very young age. We want kids uh, to, to really enjoy their childhood here in Manchester so that they have a desire to stay here. Or so that when they're done with high school, they go off, they get a degree, they start a family, whatever it is. We want them to come back. We want them to feel welcome and, and just know that this is a place where I can, where I can thrive. And want the same thing for, uh, for Manchester as well. So we'll open it up now, uh, but want to talk about your thoughts and hopes for the future Manchester brand and then also uh, answer any questions. But before I do that, I just want to call out, um, we've created this simple site, distinctlymanchester.com. I don't know if you guys have already been on that page yet, uh, but it just talks a little bit more about the process, talks about why it's important, um, and, uh, and a very important part there, there's a, a sign up button, or you can click on a button to sign up to become a brand ambassador or also to be notified when the community survey is available. Uh, we do want to hear from the entire community. Uh, and so please, when you see that survey come out in the next few weeks, please take it, but then also share it with everybody you know. Uh, and then you, know, you can sign up to become a brand ambassador, fill in a little bit more information about what makes uh, Manchester unique uh, to you and, and share a little bit of your perspective there. So, um, and exclusive for today, uh, we've put up a small audience survey for anybody who's here with us in person, anybody online, uh, feel free to go on that site uh, through the end of today um, and answer just a few questions um, regarding the brand that 
that we are about to uncover for the community. So we'll open it up to any questions, but also if you want to give your thoughts, what uh, what does make Manchester the great uh, a great place to uh, to live? And so I know Jody is going to be walking around with the microphone too. So uh, yeah, please feel free. If, if you guys want to come down here, sure. Can... Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, Welcome to Manchester. Thank you. Um, so Jody mentioned early on that it is important to get an outsider's perspective, and someone like myself who grew up here can tend to put blinders on. I, I am aware of the many great things our city has, but I'm curious you, of your perspective visiting Manchester for the first time, and what are the, some of the great things you've seen um, in your in the last few days being here sure. that we can celebrate or remind ourselves to celebrate. Yes, yeah, so, so I'll start with that. Um, we flew into MHT, uh, and uh, honestly, that was a, a great welcoming to you know, get off the plane and drive 15 minutes and we're downtown. So the convenience was really nice. Uh, I appreciated that. But then even just driving in, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous here. I'm really glad we're here in, in May. Uh, I'm sure it looks a little bit different in January and February, a different kind of beauty, uh, but, uh, but it, it's nice to be here now. Uh, and then, you know, our, our first kind of look was, uh, was kind of going through the downtown area, looking through the mill yard, seeing uh, the history there, uh, seeing how that's just been completely revitalized, how, uh, how vital it was to, uh, to the economy back then, but how it's still just in, invigorating and, and infusing the, the economy right now, too. Um, me, I'm, I'm a nature lover, so I've, I've loved being so close to nature, and you guys are absolutely spoiled, man. I mean, you drive five minutes away and you're, you're in the wilderness, you're in, in a park or in, a, in the trees. Even 10 minutes away from here, you can go skiing. Um, but uh, my, my real favorite part so far uh, this morning, I uh, woke up super early, but it, it's not that hard to when the sun's waking you up at 5.15. Um, and I, I went out to Massabesic Lake and, and did a little walk around there and, and uh, hiked down to the cliffs of Massabesic and just hung out there for about a half hour, 45 minutes and just taking in the beauty that you guys have here. So it is nice to see that you have 116,000 people here and yet you are so close to so many natural and beautiful resources here. It is just, it's a, it's a beautiful place to be. So from an outsider's perspective and, and quick first perspective, uh, just gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Thank you, I appreciate that. And we do have a globally rare ecosystem within the confines of the city um, up at Hackett Hill. I don't know if you've been there, but when you come back, I encourage you to visit it. It's gorgeous. Cool, good to know, thank you. Hello, thank you for the presentation. Um, also, I am someone who uh, grew up here in Manchester, and I agree that it is a, environmentally a, a very beautiful and diverse place. Um, but for me, the best thing about Manchester is the people. Um, you know, I'm sure that you got a tutorial on the history of Manchester and um, it being like the working people who built the city. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you that while you're here and you're looking at all of the, you know, the downtown and all of those wonder wonderful places, um, I really encourage you to go into the neighborhoods um, where the people who built the city and are still building the city live. Um, and, and get to see the different diverse cultures that we have in Manchester. Um, Manchester is an oasis of diversity in this state. Um, so I just, I just hope that you get an opportunity to do that. Yeah, that's a great point. And actually, we did that yesterday afternoon. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but Roberto and I went on a little uh, biking tour. Uh, and so it started kind of downtown, but we went through, through Central, is it just called Central Town? Central? Yeah, Center City. Center City, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went through Center City, rode bikes through there. Um, we rode up to the ski uh, resort. Uh, so we tried to cover as much ground as we could and just, you know, really getting in in those neighborhoods rather than just, just driving through. But absolutely wanted to see as much as possible. And then when we went on the, on the tour on Monday, we went all the way out to the west side. Um, I mean, I feel like we covered a ton, but there's, there's so much here that yeah, we would need a, a few more weeks of riding bikes to truly uncover it all. Thank you, 
and I think it is important for everyone in the room here and for everyone watching on TV, uh, we did give a very extensive tour to the consultants starting with a walking tour. Uh, they are staying downtown, so they are very much aware of the good, the bad, and the ugly that the city is experiencing right now. And we did walk them through the downtown and through some of the inner city neighborhoods, so they've seen firsthand some of the issues that I think a lot of you probably are most concerned about. Uh, so this initiative and this project is not living through rose-colored glasses, it's not looking at the city with blinders on. They are getting first-hand experience of everything this city has, like I said, the good, the bad, the ugly. And because the city has challenges that may be taking center stage right now, that doesn't mean that our initiatives through promoting our city for the great assets we do have should take a back seat. There are a number of professionals in the city through the fire department, police department, and homeless initiatives director working on those. From the Economic Development Office, we are focusing on making sure the city is attractive, our tax base is increasing, and we are a welcoming place for people to live, work, and play. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that we did show them a lot of the issues that I think people are very concerned about in the city, so they are very well aware of some of those. And we welcome anyone to share anything that you'd like. There's no wrong answers here. Hi, thanks for coming here. Uh, I was wondering if you could share more of the depth of the scope of work as far as like deliverables. Are we talking just the brand? Are we going into websites, apps, uh, tourist guides, things like that? Yeah. Um, and on to that one, if I'm similar, it's like, are you guys just a report and then here's the deliverables or where does that work out? Great question. Um, as you saw earlier, we had that um, outline of, of our process and that the ending point said brand action ideas and implementation. Um, we carry the project all the way through brand creation, creative execution, which uh, includes those deliverables that you might be curious about, logo, tagline, um, implementation examples, like those you saw for Sun Prairie. Um, we are also contracted for a four-year marketing plan at the end of that process. Um, which means marketing strategies and tactics that will um, go beyond just implementation as far as um, putting the logo on things, right? So it's um, targeting specific audiences, it's targeting, spe targeting specific um, industries um, for economic development. Um, so that is a part of our scope of work. Um, things like websites, apps, are not within the scope of work as yet, um, and they would be things that we could facilitate or that somebody, another contractor could facilitate um, because we are very adept with collaborating um, with companies whose core services are municipal websites. Um, so there, there are plenty of those providers um, who look for those opportunities, so we're more than happy to work with them or to take that on as the main contractor, um, but that is not currently a part of our contract is so. Thanks. I guess uh, to, to expand up a bit for the future uh, endeavors here, and, and Vanessa touched on it a little bit. I think our, our city has a brand now of a, of a, a burgeoning tech sector type city. Um, but I, to Vanessa's point, I think it's important that we don't forget it was a mill city and uh, labor built the city. And uh, so it has to be a fusion uh, between the new and the old. And then to expand on your point about uh, moving or, or traveling 15 minutes to see a lot of things. Uh, it's also important to note 45 minutes north is the mountains, 45 minutes west or east is the beach, 45 minutes south is Boston, and we're only four hours away from New York City too. So we have a lot of great things going on here. Of course, good points, thank you. And, and sorry, I'm not just texting, but do want to take notes as you guys do give some feedback. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely. I just wanted to, it's actually interesting that you mentioned, you know, the, the past and, and present, because I think one of the things that really strikes me as special about Manchester is um, it just seems like there's so much ingenuity and creativity around, um, whether it's within tech or within the arts. Um, there's, when you, like, look at the Milliard, the, the origin of that, like the Amistech Mills, how they, you know, there's a lot of mill cities, right? But the way that they 
implemented that was very different. And it, I mean, it was really, it was the, one of the first examples of like corporate responsibility where they were, you know, building much larger smokestacks to carry, you know, carry smoke out of the city and what they were doing for, you know, they really cared about their workers, you know, uh, far more than many in their time. Um, so <clears throat> from that to, you know, Canal Street, the lengths that they went to carry water out of the river and then, you know, into powering these mills, I think is really um, just a testament to that, you know, sort of ingenuity, right, of the past. And then in, you know, the present now, you know, we have just such incredible innovators and, and the tech going on in the city, but some really to the strange side, to the weird, you know what I mean? You know, you have Dean Kamen and some, some of these like, you know, really cool from the, um, you know, the Segway and, and some of these things that were created to now, you know, we're 3D printing human tissue and organs down in that mill yard. So it's just, there's some really interesting threads that you can kind of pull from history to, to present. So that's kind of what I would love to highlight is, is the ingenuity and creativity behind some of the usual that you see in, in typical cities. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Um, my name is Molly Leno, and I'm here with my two kids. And my question is, how, what are the goals or incentives or encouragements for different entities within the city to adopt this? I'm thinking, will the schools have the same brand? Will uh, you know nonprofit organizations affiliated with Manchester be able to use this branding? I'm part of the Manchester Young Professionals. You know, can we adopt it? Because as a, a younger person, I do find that the branding is a way to find you know, place making and identify kind of quickly when there's a lot of information out there what is official maybe or help help pieces connect the whole. I'm thinking our master plan, you know, can it be rebranded with this, these, how far will it go and how would we incentivize groups to implement that because it does take a lot of work. Um. For sure. So um, that is, uh, believe it or not, one of the both, both easiest and hardest things to do as part of this process. It's easy because there's a lot of excitement, right? Um, we come in um, and we get to meet with city departments. We get to meet with outside organizations that are partnered very closely with the city. Um, and they all want to be a part of this process. Um, they, everybody here specifically in Manchester has been um, very, you know, pro uh, cohesion, pro uh, creating something shared and, and special for the city. Um, and it's, that's not always the case. So, so we have that going for us here. Um, but we know that sometimes there are late adopters who don't necessarily want to get, get on board until it's a proven concept. Um, and we've worked in those situations as well. So in the past, um, we've been able to finish an engagement with, with a specific city, and then departments come later, and they say, hey, I would, I would like to maybe get in on that. Um, but they have established identities that have gained some equity in the community, right? Um, and we're more than happy to work with them to adapt the main brand um, as you saw in the Sun Prairie example, um, to various entities during the process, but we can also do that after that is complete um, and really give everybody who wants to be a part of, of the new brand um, a, a their own little space. Um, so that doesn't always happen as part of the main process. It can happen later. Um, what's important is that it happens, right? So um, Manchester Young Professionals is a part of the chamber, um, they have been very involved, um, and during the creative phase, which is after that brand strategy DNA presentation, um, that's when we will start to have those talks with um, the chamber, um, public works, to see which departments and which partners want to get involved um, as far as graphic identity. So it's a long process, it's a rewarding process in the end. Thank you. 
Um, I think this is a great initiative. I think it's coming at a great time, at the right time. Um, and my question, I, maybe I have to preface it a little bit. Um, I'm a member of the school board here in Manchester, and I think one of our challenges um, on, with the schools is telling our story, telling about all the great things that are happening in the school district, the, the, sometimes the, the chaotic things that happen or the unexpected things get in the way. And I guess as it relates to this, um, you know, it certainly sounds like at the end of all of this, we're going to get um, a logo and we're going to get some branding strategy. But do we get, because I think where we need support, especially for people like myself that's lived here all my life and, and love it here and wouldn't live anywhere else, um, is how do we tell our story? Um, you know, I think that, that goes a long way and getting some um, mentoring, coaching, whatever word you want to use, I think to support um, people in our city, whether they be citizens, whether they be people on boards, people um, you know involved in our nonprofits, because I think that you know being able to tell our story doesn't isn't as easy as maybe it sounds. Because I think there's a, as we know, there's a lot of good things happening, and at the end of this, I think to make this successful, I think we would all benefit from kind of some guidance along that way. Hopefully, that makes sense. Of course, and uh, thank you so much for, for that question. What our process takes care of doing is um, knowing that storytelling doesn't start and end at the logo. Um, it's a great tool to convey a lot of information quickly. Um, it's not the end all be all of telling three, four hundred years of history um, of, of the city plus 12,000 years before uh, of human habitation in this area, right? So um, our process includes um, more long form storytelling, we call it a brand narrative. It is part and parcel of um, every project that we work on. And that facilitates a little bit of what we call the elevator speech. Um, so your main selling points for the city as they relate to resident attraction, retention, um, tourism and economic development. So we like to cover those three areas um, fairly thoroughly with that brand narrative. Um, and then additionally, we, we can work on, um, with that marketing strategy, working on the best messaging that, that will reach the audiences that you want to reach. And, um, you know, that eventually makes its way to websites, social media posts, and it allows residents to then take that adopt it, um, add a little local flavor, um, and then you're off, right? Um, we want you to be able to tell your story within the larger story that the city is trying to weave. Um, it's not about restricting you to three talking points and then that's it. It's about letting you say, well, I moved here um, 30 odd years ago, and this is what I've experienced, and then hit the high points of the things that the city really wants to highlight, right? Um, so that is, we know that that's really valuable to um, everyday residents, just to be able to tell your families in other states, um, come visit, this is what we want to do, uh, this is the itinerary that I've set out for you, and this is why. Um, and then give them all the little uh, things that only locals know about. And then from the school board perspective too, you know, want to be able to tell that story to potential residents or new people coming in. Uh, as families are looking to move in and they're bringing their kids to the school district, uh, you want to be able to quickly uh, tell them, you know, what, what the Manchester School District is like, what some of those highlights are, uh, and kind of control your own narrative the right way. So um, one of the other things that, that we'll do with those brand action ideas, uh, it's unique to each community that we work with, so I don't have the answer yet as to how you should be telling the story or the actual tactics, um, but, but that is something that will be delivered is, uh, it'll probably be 25, 35 different ideas of here's how to tell your story. Here's those different channels or those levers that you need to pull to get that, that message out there. So that will be something that, that will be part of the process or part of the deliverables. Thanks so much. Thank you, hello. Um, this is actually for Jody, I think, um, to ask her how does this you bring us the report now what and how's oh, 
what do you think this looks like from here? You know, is this flowing through economic development into the rest of city government? To, well, I mean, how do you imagine this looks like after the given us the, the first part of this? Love that you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, I, mean, I think it's a great question and uh, one that I, I'm excited to answer. Um, so one of the exciting parts about leading this initiative through the Economic Development Office is I am born and raised in Manchester. I left for a small period of time. It took me leaving to realize why I wanted to come back. And I am more passionate about this city than I've ever been. Uh, I am a product of our school system, okay, all the way through uh, 12th grade. I'm a West Side girl. I went to Northwest, Parkside, and West High School. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. And so it, it gives me great pride to lead this initiative through our office and, and alongside Eric Lesniak as well. Uh, so what excites me about working with this team is that they specialize in this type of stuff so they can help where, where I don't specialize in this type of stuff about how to brand an entire community. What they're gonna do with their deliverables will help guide us and build a strategy so then the Economic Development Office can then filter that out through the whole city. And I say that because this is not a rebrand of the city government. This is a brand identity for the boundaries of the entire city of Manchester. And what that means is that when you come to Manchester, you're not just coming to the downtown. There's a number of other locations and neighborhoods that are outside of our downtown area. We focus a lot on the downtown, but we're so much more than that. And part of this process will be making sure that the story is told, not just here in Manchester, from us here as residents and people that work here, but what we want to happen is when people enter our city to know they're entering Manchester. And I sound like a broken record, but what, ex what I've been using as an example is that there's certain communities throughout the area, New England and throughout the entire country, that when you hear those names, whether you've been there or not, you have a vision that you, you think of, and I use Asheville, North Carolina as one of those, and Greenville, South Carolina. Those are communities that are relatively landlocked in the Carolinas. A lot of people haven't really been there, but they've certainly heard of them. Same thing, more local examples, Portland, Maine, Burlington, Vermont, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Those, when you hear those names, you immediately think Portsmouth, New Hampshire, oh, maritime, old buildings, the, the sea culture. The sea, the sea coast, you think Portland, you think of lobsters, you think of lobster fishermen, you think of the cute little quaint shops. Burlington, you think of white steeples like amongst the Green Mountains, a college town, Church Street. There is no reason why Manchester can't have those same positive recognitions with people from outside of our community. And that's why this is a long-winded answer to your question, but that's what I'm going to strive to take this initiative forward to, is that it's helping build the community pride amongst us and reminding us why we all live here. We wouldn't live here if we hated it. I, I think there's a lot of pride in this city. And as I mentioned when we first started, sometimes that gets overlooked by the negative. I've certainly fallen victim to that by every day walking into work and maybe I see the same thing every, every day and it's really starting to get on my nerves. But then as I venture out into the city, I'm reminded why I live here and why I love it here. And for all the reasons that many of you have mentioned tonight, that's why I stay here and that's why I advocate for this city. And that's the goal of this, is to bring that message out to the greater community. And what their deliverables are going to be is, we may think, oh, it's a billboard uh, along Elm Street above one of our buildings, visit Manchester. Well, why would we say visit Manchester if you're in Manchester? What their research is gonna tell us is what are the target markets? Where do we need to reach out? Where are people, clicking through social media, where are our views coming from? They may tell us that you need to start marketing in Boulder, Colorado, because you have a lot of people coming from that area to here. So I don't have the total answer because once they give me the, the feedback of how we need to set our target markets, that's how we're going to kind of attack. But I can tell you the goal of this is to roll it out aggressively over a long period of time. It'll start, it'll, it'll start through the Economic Development Office because we're leading this initiative. And the great thing, so he asked about how this is going to work with other departments too. So while we were here, I wanted to make sure that the other, while these guys were here, I wanted to make sure that the other departments were just as engaged as the Economic Development Offices. I know Eric and I have a lot of extra enthusiasm that maybe other departments don't always have. Um, but they have met with every single department head for the most part while they've been here. They had one-on-one -on -one interviews with the fire chief and chief, uh, the, the assistant chief, the police chief, the DPW team, um, finance office, uh, the library, I mean, you name it. They've met with them and, and they, I will say, are very much bought into this initiative. 
There are, I use DPW as an example, there's a number of different logos between Parks and Recreation, Waterworks, EPD, um, the main DPW logo, and they have expressed no concern with merging everything to look similar and to build that consistency to do banners along the downtown that lets you know you're in Manchester and you're, you're, there's, you know, there's an identity here. Um, so I say it's gonna be an aggressive, long process. It's gonna be aggressive because when we roll it out, you're, you're gonna see it, you're gonna know it. But long process meaning it's not gonna be rolled out and then that's it. It's not gonna be, and it's not gonna end, we're not gonna exhaust all the money up front. This is something that's going to stay in the public eye for a while and what is attractive right now and where our needs are right now may not be the needs four years from now. So having a long-term vision in mind will be able to help us keep everything fresh, fun, and who knows where four years, what technology will be like and where we're putting this new brand and design. So I know that was a long-winded answer, but I hope it answered it. They're, they're helping us because we need help. And once they tell us where to go, then we're gonna run with it. Hi, I just spent some time with you, Roberta. Good to see you again. Um, so have we thought about and have you had the chance to meet with the, um, um, I don't know what they're called anymore, Department of um, Tourism at the state of New Hampshire level? because I think they're an important piece of this because they spend a lot of time and money um, marketing outside of the state. They primarily focus on our great resources, which you guys have noticed, but we are a city and we're very different from the rest of the state. So we sometimes take a back seat to the White Mountains, the lakes, but I would love and my whole life's work has been to try to get Manchester on that map, so to speak, to make sure that we are a part of New Hampshire that's celebrated and the state promotes us. So swing in on the coattails of some of the money that's spent in other countries and other places by the state of New Hampshire and knowing what their strategy is, I think would be really helpful. Yeah, and I think as, as this is all launched and as there's so much excitement about it already, but especially when it comes to completion and fruition, uh, hopefully the Department of Tourism sees that, recognizes that, and sees that change in that perspective or perception of, of Manchester, and then really quickly adapts it and starts to promote it as well. And I think it's more about us than them, just to clarify. They've been asking for this information for a really long time, years and years, 20 Five, 27 years that I've been working with them and it's always been hard to tell our stories the White Mountains has a story the Lakes region has a story and then we kind of fall off the map and we go oh, I don't know where we got the airport and you know so it's it's more about us being able to articulate that story but then utilize it going forward um, at the state level and then out. So they haven't, I haven't directly connected them with the state yet, but they have had one-on-one -on -one interviews and a member um, of the state's media advertising firm they have met with. Um, so they have already made a connection in that sense, but I will be connecting them with members of the state. I wanted to get back on a comment. Unlike a lot of other people here, I am not born and raised in Manchester. No, I know. I, 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 I came here. Um, unique thing about New England and the old Yankee mentality that's still around is I've spent my entire professional 30 year career cooking in this city, particularly downtown, and yet I am still the chef from California. <laughs> so I don't do with what that you may, but you know, I was born and raised in California, moved here when I was 22 years old, and I am the chef from California 30 years later. So. Just give it another 30 years. I think Manchester gave me my locals card maybe 10 years ago. There's parts of New Hampshire that will never consider me local. So that's, that's my part of it. Hello. Um, from your experience, I assume that you track the success or lack thereof or whatever of the initiatives and I would assume some projects are 
successful and perhaps some aren't. What are the major factors in a branding project like this succeeding or failing? Uh, two major factors are the community itself and then uh, who is tasked with rolling it out. Uh, the community here I don't think is going to be a problem. I think y'all are able to quickly adapt, uh, adopt this and, and bring it to life. And then between Jody and Eric, are you kidding me? There's not a problem at all. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any issue at all trying to implement this or trying to gain steam or, or steamroll people to make sure that this gets done. Uh, the, but the biggest factor in that success is, uh, is the willingness of people to, to really put in the work. And you guys here in Manchester are, are known for the work. Uh, so I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. But you're right, there have been, there have been several communities that we've worked with that we're so dang proud of the output. We have a fantastic strategic marketing plan or even those brand action ideas, turn it all over and it just kind of falls flat. Um, they, they have this playbook, they have all these ideas, but just not able to bring any of those to fruition, whether it's just too busy with other things um, or they'll kick it off and it'll last for six months. Um, and you know they'll try to sputter it around for a little bit longer, but uh, but when you have somebody like Jody and somebody like Eric really spearheading this project, it, it's going to go far. Yeah, so I think we'd really appreciate it if um, instead of having the mentality that you are having this brand thrust upon you, um, you know, it's it's very important that you feel like stewards of the brand as much as you feel like stewards of the community. Um, so when you walk down the street and you see some litter and you pick it up, uh, when you see the brand um, in action, support it. Um, it's, it's very um, grassroots in that way and, and that can very quickly snowball into a lot of success across a lot of different areas of the community. So that's, that's just something um, that, that we see successful communities do. Um, just turn passion into action. Um, it's, it's almost a one-to-one -one formula. Yeah, I'll, I'll share a quick example of, uh, of a community that was really successful, Fargo, North Dakota. Um, they, uh, they wanted to, to appeal to more people and try to convince people that, you know what, it's not really that cold here, come hang out, it's great. No, it's cold. Uh, and, and, uh, and we told them to really embrace that, to lean into that. Uh, and so the, the tagline that we came up with for them was north of normal. Uh, and they're a little bit like Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, a little quirky. Maybe times 10,000. Uh, they're, they're very quirky, very odd. Uh, not so normal. I think the, the severe cold has done something to them. Um, but they, they really embrace that north of normal mentality and mindset. And, uh, and that's just them. The different festivals that they have are a little bit odd. Uh, the people themselves, they just embrace that. When communications come out from the city or when there's different initiatives or events, they rally behind it, they get behind it. They know that, yeah, we're a little bit north of normal. It's cold here and they've just embraced it. So it truly is, like Roberto says, it's grassroots, it's the community itself that is, is truly the champions of the brand. And we do have a history of some of these initiatives um, not, maintaining the momentum that we would have hoped for. So you might, I don't know if you have heard of those, or maybe we could learn from that history and try to avoid um, how those didn't quite make it to how we would have hoped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's, that's a great point too. And even here in Manchester, maybe some of the things might not have worked in the past, but it's a, it's a great thing to learn from, right? Learning from, not necessarily the mistakes, but learning from previous experiences and examples uh, so that it's, uh, you know, the next time we do it, it's going to be significantly better. Sam, to build on Jeff's uh, first comment about success in communities and, success and not so great success in other communities, can you talk to, touch on the ROI component of this? Yeah, absolutely. So in the community survey, one of the things that we're going to be asking uh, is how likely are you to promote Manchester as a great place to live, conduct business, or visit? So we'll try to get the net promoter score of, uh, of Manchester you'll be able to rank it on a scale of one to 10. Uh, and we'll be able to compare that against the national average, uh, against the 250, 250 communities that we've been working with. You can see where Manchester ranks amongst them, positively, negatively, right on par. Um, and then in 18 months or in two years after the brand is launched, 
uh, we can select those questions in again to another community survey that's already going. Uh, we can gauge the responses then and track. You know, maybe we were a positive two in, uh, in um, promoting Manchester as a great place to live. But in 18 months, it might be up to a nine or a 10 or even a 15. Uh, we might be a negative seven as a, as a great place to work, but in 18 months, uh, maybe we're creeping up to just a, a negative four, a negative, a negative three. So it is, a, it is a way that we can actually track our efforts and track the attitudes and perceptions of the, of the community. Yeah, and there are obviously additional measurements when we get to the marketing strategy phase. Um, they're on digital, particularly you measure by views, clicks, et cetera. Um, and essentially, uh, roughly get a measurement of your real return on investment by foot traffic, by car traffic, um, especially when it comes to tourism. That is by far the, the one of the most evident ways of quantifying that return on investment um, when you um, fulfill that tourism piece and you see a little more traffic downtown and you see um, more people in the parks, more people um, using, utilizing all the spaces that, that Manchester has. So um, you're also, you know, going to um, bring in a lot of new downtown residents. Um, that complicates a little bit of the data. Um, but that's not to say that you can't separate, you know, what's um, happening through various geolocation services for cell phones. Um, put a, basically put a fence around your attractions and see how many out of town people pass through. Um, uh, visitor requests online, uh, visitor check-ins at local businesses. So all of those things um, will more or less go into the measurement bucket to be able to tell you, you know, how effective uh, these efforts have been. Yeah, I think it's also important to note the importance of a net promoter score and how the city ranks on things like livability, Forbes.com, Wallet Hub, Condo Nast, uh, because the city uses those high rankings and the net promoter scores when we're going after bond ratings. And the higher we rank on those listings, the better we are with our bond ratings, which means the more opportunities we have for investment. Uh, we do bond for a lot here in the city. We, our uh, arena, our ballpark, our roads, a lot of things rely on the success of our, our net promoter scores and our, our high bond ratings. And we could do really well in the city. Um, so I, this initiative will only make those ratings and those, those, those high rankings go up. Mm -hmm. First, I'd point out there are more people in New Hampshire that didn't, weren't born here than, than are, so you're in the majority if you came from somewhere else, as I did as well. Um, I'd be curious to know, since you've been here for a while, what you do think about Manchester yourselves. I mean, I think about the fact we're a little more than an hour from the ocean, from the mountains, and from Boston, with four major league uh, sports teams, all of them. Uh, what do you guys see here, uh, we know something about the history, the yard, those things, but I'd be curious what, what your impressions are. So I think Sam answered the earlier question about first impressions, so I'll take this one. Um, I think coming in before we um, started studying Manchester for this project, uh, Manchester in the state of Tennessee where I'm from, um, is only in history books as uh, one of those mill towns, right? So um, the, the textile uh, industry is something that I knew about, um, but actually seeing the buildings is something completely different. Um, the way that you've preserved the buildings, despite um, you know hearing that they fell into disrepair a few decades ago, um, is remarkable um, for, you know, for you to preserve any quantity of buildings, um, even if it's only a portion of what once was. Um, for me, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I wanna say, I wanna call it like heartwarming to know that you value your history enough to preserve it. Uh, a lot of other places don't take that care. Um, and there's only plaques where amazing things once stood. Um, I think that's point number one for me. 
Um, number two, the amount of green that, that you have here um, is certainly appealing to a, a demographic that I belong to, which is just young, active um, people who, after work, we like to go outside and run, um, or we like to go outside and go for a bike ride. Um, that lifestyle right now is very appealing all across the country. Um, so when, we, when I do visit places like Johnson City, Tennessee, Indio, California, those are the things that I look for as, as far as livability uh, pluses for, for a city. So obviously I'm very impressed with that. And then the third thing, um, as an immigrant myself, you call me a new American, um, the history that you have of, of people just coming in and contributing, and they don't have to integrate first generation or even second generation, but they leave their mark. Um, and although nobody has spoken to me in French, I've been prepared. I promise you. Uh, I've had my bonjour ready um, to, to, you know, going back to all my high school French. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's really important uh, to us to be able to reflect that as part of your story. I don't think it's uh, something that we can simply skip over because your immigrant community is, is the community that essentially worked at the mills, built the city, um, and has now, in a new era, brought different flavors, different passions, different ideas to this part of New Hampshire, which sets it apart from um, more homogenous areas of the state. So I'd say those are the three things that I, I have focused on so far. Um, and I've been excited to learn about and we'll keep learning about um, throughout this process. No comments from you? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll, I'll fill in a little bit more too. Uh, so we go on a lot of these trips, uh, at least once a month. Um, and, uh, and the question that I ask myself in every single city that I go into is, could I see myself living here? If I take away, um, I mean, of course I can live anywhere that my family isn't. So. Taking that aside, um, could I see myself living here? And as we've gone through the city of Manchester, I see a golf course, I see a couple golf courses. I see the, the nature, I see the trails, I see the hiking, uh, I see the lakes. Uh, and then in winter time, what you guys do on, on those lakes or the ponds or even the golf course grooming it for cross country skiing to, to try to make winter a little bit more bearable, right? Um, I, I, I just think that you guys truly do have everything that I would want. Uh, you guys have uh, a great downtown, you have a great outer town too. Uh, it's, a, it's an inviting place, you have a great food scene. You have all the amenities of, of a much bigger city. You guys are kind of outsizing yourself. There's so much more here than you would expect. Uh, and so it's, a, it's kind of nice to come in and, and just be pleasantly surprised. Like, oh yeah, I thought Manchester was pretty good. And then I went there and I said, oh, it's dang good. Manchester is really great. Um, so uh, that, that's kind of my barometer. Whenever I go into a place, I think, could I see myself living here? And we go into a lot of places that I think absolutely not. Uh, I can't, um, but, but Manchester and just my, my brief stay here in these three days, I think you guys have a, a ton going on that absolutely, uh, this is a place where I would love to be. Yeah, so. No? Okay. Andrew Sylvia, Manchester Drain Clank. Uh, out of the hundreds of places that you've been, have you ever had a city that, for lack of a better word, failed, did improve due to what you brought to them? And if so, why? Uh, yeah, and I think it, it goes back to an earlier question, too, of just not being able to, to fully adopt it. Um, we, we proposed uh, something great uh, in the city. We even got consensus from the city management, city leaders, uh, had, had unanimous agreement from everybody in consensus and endorsement. Uh, but it was just uh, maybe a, a lack of resources from the city to be able to put behind this initiative uh, when, we, when we turned everything over to them. They just didn't have the staffing in place. Uh, and so they just get buried down with way too much other things going on uh, that they weren't able to fully give it the attention that it needs. Um, even if it was something that the community embraced, they still need some of that, uh, that uh, um, a starting point from, uh, from city leadership. Where was it? Uh, don't want to say where it was, but, uh, but it has happened for sure. Uh, 
Uh, just one more for me. Uh, can you give any examples of some action items that you guys have suggested that are, you know, beyond um, Main Street signs or branding on letterhead or vehicles? Something interesting or unique, kind of out of the box. Oh, you didn't think those images were interesting? <laughs> they they were. They look good. But anything beyond that, I think that's what we expect to see, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, one example uh, for for what we did in Marshall, Minnesota, uh, a little bit of a similar kind of lack of downtown square that you guys have here or don't have here. There is no just center square uh, down there, but they do have a lot of great alleyways. Uh, and uh, and so one of the things that we suggested that they implement was getting this giant inflatable M that, that resembled the logo that, that we created for them uh, to kind of block off the traffic but so that people could still walk in and then they would string lights between the buildings and have concerts, have, have food, uh, music, uh, dancing, just have different events uh, and, and a great nightlife down there. Um, and it was a great, great way for people to flock back downtown as similar to, to Manchester, what might not have been a thriving downtown is, is really seeing a, a resurgence again. So that's a simple, simple example. Um, I, I think you'd be surprised that <laughs> the fact that we're, we're actually not all knowing. Um, so we provide these brand implementation ideas, but we don't um, really know exactly how they're going to be executed. Um, in Johnson City, Tennessee, we gave them idea starters. We never really know where they go. Um, but Johnson City has been a fantastic success story with their brand, uh, mainly because they took their passion and channeled they embraced it. it. Yeah, they embraced it. Um, I went back, because it's a short drive east for me, um, and in one of their alleyways, they that had formerly been overgrown grass, um, I don't know if you have any of those, um, it's just kind of empty space. Um, they had turned it into a small patio area in the downtown um, with this beautiful mural of the brand that wasn't even necessarily in the brand colors, but it very much captured the spirit of the city um, and captured the spirit of the brand. Um, so sometimes the the implementation ideas from us are simply a little spark, um, and then the creative minds that are here can turn them into something far beyond what we expected um, to, to really provide for you. Um, so it's a very collaborative process in that way, um, and Manchester has a great arts community to be able to make that happen um, in unexpected ways that you know maybe we didn't put in the plan. Um, and that's Honestly, that's, those are some of the best um, case studies that, that we have um, to, to kind of show other cities. Um, yeah. So please do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll share one more example from that Marshall, Minnesota. Uh, we encourage them to do some type of mural or art piece, uh, uh, art installation. And what they ended up creating was this massive uh, M statue, the logo again, um, but they invited everybody. It's, it's a very old, very historic city, uh, and, and people have been living there for uh, multi, multi generations. Uh, and so they invited residents to come out and bring different pieces of, of history or artifacts or things from, that had been passed down. It might have been like a chipped piece of china or a, a chipped uh, a teapot or something. Bring that downtown, and we crush these up and make this giant mosaic and uh, portraying some of the historical bits throughout history. Uh, and one of the really cool things in Marshall, Minnesota, it, the, the railway was a, a very vital piece of that city in the early days. Uh, and the very first conductor in Marshall, Minnesota was given a little conductor's coin from the railroad. That had been passed down for generations. And then as this mosaic was being built, the person that had that coin brought that to the, uh, to the sculpture and placed that right at the button of the train that was, uh, that was in that sculpture. And that is something that is, uh, I mean, you talk about really embracing the brand and embracing some of those initiatives. That's the, that's the community getting right behind it. Thanks. Sure. I would just like to add to that, that selfishly, I would like to see some really well-branded Manchester swag. I'm a sucker for a t-shirt, and no matter where I go, I will get a t-shirt that says, I am that person that buys the New Hampshire t-shirts at Rite Aid. 
because I just love a good t-shirt. So I would love to see some of our local establishments have some really high quality, well-branded Manchester swag. Um, and I know Jen supports that too. <laughs> Working on a t-shirt line myself. Um, so we may not have the corn fest like Sun Prairie, and we may not have a Cohen movie, Cohen brother movie such as Fargo, but the city does have a plethora of quirky things and wonderfully weird things I am happy to always talk about. Um, <laughs> one of those is a pond, it, Nuts Pond, named after a local famous tiny person, uh, circus performer who toured with Tom Thumb and P.T. Barnum. Um, another is a gentleman who lived self-sufficiently in the woods for 60 years at Crystal Lake. If you think about Henry David Thoreau, that was about a year or two on Walden Pond. Um, we have a moxie bottle that was a concession stand at a park that was turned into a house. So we didn't have an old woman who lived in a shoe, but we had someone living in a moxie bottle. We have the Mercy boxcar on the west side. We have so many wonderfully weird, quirky things that I think we should resurrect and celebrate, and I'm happy to talk about them in the future with anybody. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you. Love an alternative history lesson. <laughs> Jen's your girl. <laughs> Anyone else? Does anyone have any concerns about the process or things that um, they want to make sure we don't focus on? Or? Yeah, so yeah, maybe that's a great point too. When, uh, when this brand is complete, what shouldn't be in there? What, uh, what might Manchester have been known for that we definitely don't want it to be included in this new brand? So for anyone watching, a couple of the answers, Brewery Bro Aesthetic and Manch Vegas. Uh, yeah, thank you. And poker machines. And poker machines. <laughs> Part and parcel of Manch Vegas. And maybe Demented Santa. Oh, like Demented Santa. Santa. That's the most controversial no, thing in the room so far. That's a good one. <laughs> Well, at least we know that you have a strong Christmas spirit. <laughs> That's a positive. So we are coming up on time. I don't know if anyone has any final thoughts, final things they want to say. Um, anyone watching at home, we do encourage you. We meant, uh, they mentioned earlier Distinctly Manchester. There is an option to sign up to be a part of this process. There's also an area to provide comments, so feel free to fill in that area. Um, and anyone here want to close with anything, or Eric, or... I forgot I had an Eric next to me. <laughs> I think my biggest thing with this project is we made an investment to do this for Manchester. This project, we all know we have our challenges, we've talked about that. This is our chance to get our real story out. And getting our story out is gonna help us continue to build this city from an economic development perspective, bringing new businesses, keeping our young families here, bringing new families here, and really is the catalyst. So what I would ask, we're small in number tonight, but I know everybody in this room and I know you all have really strong voices. So my ask is that you get this out on your social media accounts, get this out to your friends, talk about this in meetings, and let's make sure that we are doing the best job and that we have the ownership of this branding because that's what's gonna make us successful. And thank you to Jody and Eric and Mito for being the ones running point on this project because I honestly can't imagine a better team in the city to make this happen. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I can kind of touch on the timeline. Uh, the research and strategy portion takes about three to four months. Uh, and when that's ready, we'll share that with Jody, we'll share that with the chamber, we'll share that with, with some of those key groups. Uh, and, and once we get consensus, then that strategy or that research presentation can be made available to the public so that you guys can see that, can have access to it. Uh, but from there, that's when we start to work on, on the creative portion. And that, that set is also about three and a half uh, to four months. 
Um, so for the next few months, we're just going to be doing, we're heads down. We're doing tons of research in and outside of the community, um, trying to trying to uncover all those things. Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, by the, yes, yeah. Yep, yep, probably early 2024, and then that strategic marketing plan would be in place for four years. We'll also be providing teasers throughout the process. And there is, there will be one more community input session that we really want to have after we do that research and strategy before we move into the creative uh, development stage. We'll come back here again and do something similar to this, but we'll share highlights of the research, but then we also want to go through some either or type scenarios with you guys. Are you uh, is, is Manchester more this or more this? Are you more traditional, more progressive? Are you more Target? Are you more Walmart? And you know that there's a big difference between those two, right? Uh, and so we're just trying to figure out what should the brand be as we go through that, uh, through that creative stage. So we'll, we'll come back again. Hopefully we have two, three, or four times as many people to, to get a little bit more insight there. Um, but, uh, but really do appreciate you guys coming out and giving some insight, especially with as bad as it was raining when we started, I think it's clearing up right now, but, uh, but thank you all for braving the weather here tonight to, to come on out. Thank you, everyone. Just want to echo that. Thank you so much for showing up tonight and coming out and for your comments and support. We really appreciate all of you.